You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Well, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul finally speaks out about the controversial shooting of former Louisville EMT Breonna Taylor, who was shot and killed by police during a no-knock search warrant that experts have heavily criticized. That took place, of course, in the month of March. Uh, not only that, of course, uh, you also have the changes being made there in Louisville, and now the boyfriend of Breonna Taylor, the man who was charged with attempted murder, even though he was licensed to carry a weapon, and the fire of the cops who bust into the house, into the apartment with no knock, he's now out of jail because a black judge let him out. Joining us right now is Philip Bailey, the politics reporter for the Louisville Courier, the Courier Journal, Journal in Louisville, uh, Kentucky. First and foremost, let's deal with uh, Kenneth Walker being, uh, being out. Uh, black judge in this particular case, that's surprising because it's rare that somebody's let out of jail for firing at police officers. Right, Roland. I mean, Judge Olu Stevens, <clears throat> who had previously had uh, fights with the Commonwealth's attorney, Tom Wine, in the city of Louisville over uh, blacks being selected on juries, he was the one who really got the ball rolling on this. And you don't really see Judge Stevens get a lot of credit, but he's the one who allowed Kenneth Walker to be on home incarceration. Back in March, that infuriated the FOP, they you know, made a big noise about that. A lot of TV stations picked it up at the time <clears throat> and really focused more on Kenneth Walker being released. And there was very little coverage or talk or conversation about why Mr. Walker was even incarcerated in the first place. Breonna Taylor at that time was really an afterthought. I remember getting uh, into a conversation with a local council member here in Louisville and bringing that very issue up, which is that the story wasn't about the officer being shot and Kenneth Walker being released on home incarceration. It was this accusation that the police had barged in without announcing themselves and had shot this woman to ribbons, even though there were no drugs found uh, in her apartment as a part of that drug case. So certainly Judge Olu Stevens uh, has been maybe a forgotten character in this, but he has a history of clashing and standing up to both prosecutors and police in these past cases. Uh, what has been the reaction from the Louisville Police Union or the police department? Thus far, the police union, I think, has been relatively quiet since this story has become a national story. They were certainly much more uh, vocal and talkative when the issue was Kenneth Walker being released on home incarceration. Thus far, you know, Chief Conrad hasn't said that much. He is supposed to testify before our city council tomorrow at the Public Safety Committee hearing about, you know, the, the shooting and use of no-knock warrants. Uh, warrants. Mayor Greg Fisher has made certain changes, announced certain policy changes, saying that all the police chief will have to sign off directly on no-knock warrants. But uh, Roland, today we had a, a story out about Chief Conrad and the series of scandals he's faced. And the question that many council members who want him fired are asking is, why weren't these policies in place beforehand? Why did Breonna Taylor have to die in, for, in order for the, the mayor to say the police chief must look at and sign off on these orders before uh, seeking a no-knock search warrant with a judge. And, and there's also, the, that's a question too, Judge Mary Shaw, who has been the judge who signed that no-knock warrant, questions are now coming to her why she signed it with such a boilerplate search warrant language being put in there by narcotics detectives. So everyone is really uh, on their heels here in Louisville, Roland, as far as this shooting is concerned. Uh, let's talk about uh, Senator Rand Paul now speaking out. Uh, on this. There are, two, there are two U.S. senators there in Kentucky, Senator Rand Paul, Senator Mitch McConnell. Um, what did Rand, Senator Rand Paul say, and have we heard anything from Mitch McConnell? I've been pestering uh, Senator Rand Paul's office over the weekend about what they have to say about the Breonna Taylor case. Senator Paul, as you know, Roland, is certainly someone who's outspoken about libertarian issues, whether it's the Patriot Act, FISA court, etc. And my question to them was, well, what about this case here of the police uh, with very little information about Breonna Taylor uh, other than seeing one drug suspect leave her apartment two or three months ago. They came out with a statement exclusively to the Courier Journal where uh, Senator Paul says that no knock warrant should be forbidden, uh, which was certainly some strong language from him. His office also points out that, look, in the past, Senator Paul has spoken out about militarization of local police. Uh, certainly there are those asking, why don't we see more Fourth Amendment advocates, more Second 
Amendment advocates, especially here in a state like Kentucky, Roland, uh, speaking out about both Breonna Taylor and her boyfriend, uh, Kenneth Walker. Senator Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell last week did address a very short statement saying that he hopes this investigation, uh, a thorough investigation, is conducted, sharing his condolences. Uh, one of the only public officials who really spoke to the issue of race in this shooting was Congressman John Yarmouth, the Democrat out of Louisville, who is the budget committee chairman. Well, it's quite interesting uh, to see the folks uh, who have not speaking out. Yesterday, again, I had the mayor on. He talked about the changes they have implemented. How have those, those been received in the community? Well, right now, there are some who say it's a bit of window dressing. As I said before, there are members of Metro Council who are asking, why weren't these uh, policies put in place beforehand? Right? I mean, no-knock warrants in the mix with stand your ground, castle doctrine laws, according to experts we've talked to, are just a recipe for disaster. You're basically pitting a law enforcement against civilians. And one of those two things has to be rectified. There's a question now of why wasn't the SWAT team used or deployed uh, in this situation? They have a higher standard for deploying SWAT than they do these individual detectives. Uh, when you look at the warrant, again, Roland, when you look at the warrant in this investigation, Breonna Taylor is never mentioned doing anything in the warrant. The only reason her name comes up is because this suspected drug dealer goes to her apartment and picks up some mail and leaves, and her car is seen outside of his home at one point. Brianna Walker is never accused or alleged in the warrant to touch any drugs, being seen around any drugs. And even the U.S. Postal Service inspector has now said publicly that there was no information or anything that would show uh, that there was suspicious mail going to her home. So the question on many people's minds is, when you talk to veteran narcotics officers like I have, veteran narcotics detectives, someone like Brianna Taylor is a peripheral individual in this investigation. She should be someone who you would at least do a search warrant, maybe in the middle of the day, if at all. You might just approach her at work or approach her at the grocery store and ask her what's going on. She certainly isn't someone who many think should be uh, susceptible to a no-knock warrant. So there certainly is an examination of that. Uh, the mayor is still under scrutiny for his bloodless response in many people's minds. when he didn't even want to say, you know, Breonna Walker's, uh, Breonna Taylor's uh, service record. So there certainly is, you know, a lot of people on edge here. But with COVID-19 still going on, you don't hear about or any see any large demonstrations or protests thus far. Um, last uh, question. Obviously, as this thing moves forward, uh, people still have significant questions. Those officers involved, there were three officers, correct? Yes. Uh, and again, they're on desk duty, but they're still on the force and still being paid. Yeah. yeah. Well, that uh, certainly uh, explains a lot. Uh, we certainly appreciate it, Philip Bailey. Thank you so very much for joining us. Right, Roland. Thank you. All right, folks. Back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Uh, this is the uh, Seek VR headset created by uh, Mary Spiel, the sister. We had her on the show. Black, black woman. She actually is the inventor of this particular headset. And so what happens is you just simply place your phone right into uh, right into here and then of course close it up and then go to their website and then their app and you can actually experience experience uh, the comedy showcase and so uh, they have these headsets these uh, VR headsets on their site seat.com uh, for sale uh, then also they have these 4d 360 degree headphones first of all i love the two stuff because they're in black and old gold uh, my frat colors uh but these are awesome uh, because uh for gamers uh it comes with it comes with attachable uh, detachable headset uh and again folks it gives you 360 degree sound amazing sound if you want to buy these you have a promo code you can use this is just for our followers uh and it is rm vip 2020 rm vip 2020 put that promo code in if you want to buy the headphones buy the vr headset you get that discount to buy it they're amazing so seek.com rm vip 2020 now back to your roland martin unfiltered video